Good morning and welcome. How y'all doing this morning? Hey, somehow the rain has held off 
once again. So uh, can we just give God a hand clap of praise for that this morning? Yes, all week uh, it looked like we were kind of surrounded and uh, somehow it just kind of worked out. So we are thankful that we're able to join together today. Let's just go to the Lord in prayer this morning and welcome him into our hearts and this ground today. Heavenly Father, we are so thankful that you are near. God, thank you that, that you are here regardless. Lord, if it would have poured down rain today, we could have celebrated the greatness of who you are. And yet, Lord, might we be reminded that as we're here on dry ground for these moments, Lord, we just corporately lift up your name together. Father, we pray for our brothers and sisters that are in need. Lord, we pray for those that are right next door to us this morning, for all of those that are uh, seeking for healing or care or strength, courage, empowerment. Lord, I pray that you would bless those in all of our care facilities. But Lord, this morning, just uh, be, being mindful of our neighbors today, we pray for Kenton Nursing and Rehab today. God bless them. Lord, thank you for our children. Thank you for our families. We thank you for a week where we got to grow uh, in the likeness of Jesus to be more like him today than we were yesterday. Today. And Lord, today we expect and we ask you to do the same thing. Change our hearts, Jesus. We need you. We want to be more like you today than we were before we came. And to that we can say, God is good. Ooh, wait a minute here. Uh, we're outside, so we got to be a little louder, all right? So God is good. And all the time. Thank you all so much. It's great to be here today. Just briefly, uh, we're going to take our final offering here in a few moments, and Brett's going to come give us the numbers. Uh, I'll just tell you, we got a lot of groundwork to make up, all right? So let me tell you what we're uh, raising funds for and the manners by which we hope to give this morning, as well as if you didn't bring checkbook pocketbooks this morning and you have a smartphone and your credit card with you, we have a means for that as well. So uh, we just want to give you all the possible options. But uh, we have a family that we support locally as a church through Nazarene Men missionaries called the Askew family. Uh, they are now stateside awaiting on visas to get back into the Dominican Republic. They have been in the country of Haiti. They were then moved over the, to the Dominican when Haiti was going through all of its political unrest. Uh, so when they were home on furlough, then the coronavirus kind of made things difficult, and now they're just waiting, a family of six, to go back. And so they have children, many of our children's age here, that will be going back, learning the language of Spanish. And so part of our goal goes towards helping them learn the Spanish language. So that was about $1,200 that we hope to send them to learn or begin learning Spanish. Uh, and then the rest of it will be for some of their needs as well as there is a children's facility in the Dominican called Footprints that actually began through a pastoral couple in the Dominican that wanted to start a vacation Bible school back in 2002. Through that, it took a lot of years of preparation. They had to build compound walls around the facility, and now the facility has been started, but they need funds to finish it. And so what was our goal? 15,000, and I will tell you, without God's help, it's impossible today. But, man, the Lord has just done great things, and I believe that he's going to continue to do that through our something today. So as we pray and as Brett comes and shares, would you just open your hearts and let the Lord speak to you on how we might be able to sacrifice something in order to help others around the world share the gospel message and hope of Jesus Christ. It's this time then, Mr. Brett is going to come and he's going to give us an update and then encourage us on how we can do this today, all right? All right. Good morning, Canaz family, both here in the, I guess, on the grass and the lawn and online. So turn to your square and say, it's a beautiful day. And we're going to dodge the rain one more time, right? So we've, we're, we're five for five. We're going to make it six for six. So, all right, we're ready for the total. Well, I guess like one thing first, got to do a couple announcements. Um, next week, we will have our family services on Saturday at 4 and 6 p.m. And we'll have our regular Sunday services at 8.45 and 10.30. Make sure you register uh, online so, uh, for those services. Also, regular offering will be taken as you leave, or you can donate or put it in the church office or do it online. The offering we're take right now is strictly for VBS. And, okay, are you ready for the numbers? All right, boys, um, last Friday, Friday night, the boys brought in $153.32. There you go. Giving them a total for the week of $757.79. 
Ladies, I think you guys robbed a bank on Thursday and Friday. So ladies, on Friday, you brought in $332.21. Giving them a total for the week of $1,243.44. Yeah, if you're a good mathematician, the girls are up about $500. But men, what happened last year? We were down and out this very day and came back and won. So um, that gives us a total really for the, the week for $2,000. Pastor Dave said the goal is what? $15,000. Do we need a miracle today? We do. Do you believe in it? So do I. All right. We're going to get there, right? Somehow. So usually we bring in seven to $10,000 a day. Um, we'll see what happens. So are we ready? So let me get my buckets here. Sure. Okay. Real quick, I told you there was another way to give. <laughs> if you forgot money today, uh, you can jump on our Facebook page, or search Kenton Church of the Nazarene on, is it Church Center, Caleb? Uh, Church Center. And under that, you can find a way to give via credit card or your debit card or your banking information. If you'd like to do that today, uh, those that come in, though, those will just be split. We all win in this, but those donations, we, we hadn't found a great way to calculate as boys versus girls. If you do that and you'd like to let us know, let myself or Brett or somebody else know, hey, I gave this online. I'd like it to go into the girls' offering. But there's a little drop-down menu there for general giving. There's also one for Vacation Bible School. Uh, we already have a $275 gift that came in through that. We're so grateful that we are uh, able to offer this. So if that's where you're at this morning, jump on there. If you have questions, man, just find somebody. We'll help get you started with what you need to do this morning. All right? Everybody clear? Crystal. <laughs> All right. Here we go. So we got your offerings. All right. We got some music. All right, let's give us some jamming. All right, ladies on your right, my left, gentlemen on the right and your left. All right, bring them on up, gang. Here we go. All right, gentlemen, I, I like our chances here. There looks, looks pretty good in this one, so. See, ladies, oh, it might be close. I don't know. We've got a miracle going on here today. All right. Think we're good? Okay. All right, here we go. I'll bring it to Sandy and Diane, and we'll have a total for you at the end of service. Girls, I want you to say on the count of three, I'm not scared. One, two, three.
That's right. All right, we're going to kick it off with our theme song as well as another favorite of ours this week, Everywhere I Go. So kids, I want you to continue helping your families and your parents lead in motion. So everybody up on your feet. And Grace is going to come up and lead us as well. And let's get this party started. Trust in you, Jesus, you're all, you're all, you're all that we need. Your power will pull us through. We're trusting in you, we're trusting in you. You give us hope and life that's forever. You make us bold and we stand together. journey there's no looking back with jesus to lead us we're on the right track oh, 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 oh. wide open spaces for wide open eyes we're looking ahead for the next big surprise oh, oh, oh. Your fire in my soul 
Your kingdom is my home And I don't walk alone Everywhere I go On this road high and low Where I go, I go with you So I won't be afraid This my home, come what may Where I go, I go with you You can have a seat. Thank you, Grace. Thank you, kids, for being so awesome this week. Uh, I have an awesome opportunity to give out some praises and shout outs to all of those who made this last week uh, possible. Uh, if you were here, I know and you know, uh, it, it definitely was different, wasn't it? It wasn't the same VBS as we know uh, to be every year. However, I still pray that in its differences and being outside in our family units, I hope it was still impactful and meaningful in some way to be together on our grounds, together as brothers and sisters, and just hear about God's power and his love and his hope that he offers us freely. And so I want to give uh, just some thank yous and shout outs really briefly uh, to all of everyone who helped make this last week possible. And so first, I just want to start out with our church. Our church leadership and church board uh, were very supportive of not canceling VBS this year. Um, and I'm just so thankful that uh, we serve and, and worship in a place that values families and being together in some way, shape, or form in the midst of our circumstances this year. So I'm very proud to be part of this church and the leadership team uh, who supported this decision. I want to thank everyone who donated supplies um, for home kits as well as snacks. Hey kids, did you like your freeze pops and your ice cream sandwiches and your goldfish crackers this week? Yeah, can you guys give a thank you with a hand clap to all those who donated? Yeah, thank you guys so much. Tara and Grace Collins, Alicia Wisman and Paulette McCauley for coming out and prepping home kits for families to take home and continue the VBS experience at home. Uh, Randy Fetter for allowing us to use this amazing trailer all week uh, to be able to uh, do motions and, and uh, lead from so that everybody can see. Uh, Jason Manns and New Hope Church for allowing us to use the TVs that you saw all week. Um, they're using them this morning. That's why we don't have them, but we certainly appreciate them letting us use those for the week so the kids can see the worship songs and the different things uh, visually. To the Kenton High School cross country team who let us use the pop-up tents that you saw under uh, or over the TVs this week uh, just to keep them cool and shaded. So thank you cross country team. Ed and Jennifer Rogers, shout out to you guys for letting us use your uh, pop-up tent for snacks. Uh, Zach Thorpe and Emily Flack, you guys were standby floaters, kind of just creeping on the grounds, like, where can I be used? Just, just tell me where, just, just tell me when, and I'm in. So thank you guys, Zach, thank you for being accessible that way. Uh, Jesse Purcell, Kristen Berkey, thank you ladies for volunteering to pass out snacks each night. I appreciate you. Grace, I appreciate you, sister, and helping uh, with my niece, Allie, and Cadence hopped in on leading motions uh, for the kids this week. Thank you so much. Brett, Amy, and Brooke Barr, you guys led Bible every night this week. Thank you so much. That's a big undertaking. If you don't know what happens behind the scenes, a leading Bible story is a huge undertaking with study and prep and those kinds of things and then to execute it every night beautifully after coming uh, from work. I greatly appreciate you guys. 
Kayla Berkey, Ethan Zimmerman, Joe Peace, uh, man, the Guru team. Thank you guys for being here every night, um, every day to help with equipment setup, um, preparation, sound checks, running media, all of this that you see behind me, they make work. I don't know anything about it, so they take a huge load off. Uh, I, I don't even have to, whew, it's just in the wind in my opinion. So thank you for allowing me to have it in the wind. My sister and nieces, they couldn't be here today. They left to go back to Tennessee yesterday, um, but they come up every year and the girls are getting older. They're starting to help out a lot more with VBS, which is really neat uh, just as an aunt and as a sister to see them travel up and make the road trip to come help. So if you guys are watching online, I love you guys and thanks for coming up. And then lastly, Dave, where is Dave? Kaka, kaka. Look up here. Look up here. Where is he? Is he not here? He's inside. He's printing his sermon. That's so like him. Well, you guys will have to hear me then uh, go on about him. But just husband, encourager, ministry partner, tech guru. I mean, how many times were you stressed this week, you and Dave, with weather? set up tear down set up tear down do we set up do we tear down how do we not ruin thousands of dollars worth of equipment uh, those are decisions that that they handled so beautifully and i'm just so thankful to have a ministry partner um who who's just he's he's amazing if you guys know dave then you probably agree so thank you to everybody who came out and families thank you guys for bringing your kids kids did you have a good week this last week Sweet! Three of you had a good week. That's so awesome. I'm so glad three of you guys had a good week. Well, we're going to continue the awesomeness with our singing. Uh, these songs will be familiar to you, and so I'm going to invite Grace to come back up. Everybody up on your feet. We're going to sing some songs. I hope the nursing home appreciates these. Um, these are some old favorites of ours that the kids got to sing this last week. So, Caleb, take it away. This train is bound for glory. This train is bound for glory. This train. This train is bound for glory. This train. This train is bound for glory. Jesus made a way in heaven for me. This train is bound in glory. This train. Let's sing that again. This train is bound for glory. This train. Oh, this train. in heaven for me this train is bound for glory let's do this one softly now this train is bound for glory this train oh this train is bound for glory this train this train is bound for glory jesus made a place in heaven for me this train is bound for glory as loud as you can in heaven for me this train is bound for glory this train oh this train is bound for glory this train oh this train is bound for glory this train yeah amen yeah it is so good to be together and singing this morning let's continue in song as we sing there's power there's power wonder working power Go sing, there's power, there's power, there's power, there's wonder working power, there's power, there's power, there's wonder working power, there is power, power, wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder working power in the precious blood. us your king there's power in the blood power in the would you live daily would you live daily his praises 
remembered a song this week. I won't say we taught the students a song. We remembered a song this week uh, that many of us probably know uh, that just says, so I'll cherish the old rugged cross as we remember the price that he paid that we might have salvation and that he might dwell with us. So let's sing this together this morning. On a hill far away, on a hill far away stood an old rugged cross, the emblem, the emblem of suffering and shame. And I love that old cross, and I love that old cross, where the dearest, where the dearest and best for a world of lost sinners was slain. So I'll cherish, so I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last, till my trophies at last I lay down. I will cling to the old exchange it someday for a crown. Sing on a hill, on a hill far away. Stood an old, stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. And I love that old cross, this morning. Lord, we thank you so much for the sacrifice that you paid, that we might have life with you eternally. Starting today, we don't have to wait, Lord, but we get to have you with us now. So we are just so thankful that we can cast all of our anxiety on you because you care for us. And we trust in you this morning, Lord. We say that we trust, we trust we trust in you, Jesus. You're all that we want and you're all that we need. 
We love you so much, Lord. Thank you for being so good to us all the time. In your name we pray, amen. You may be seated this morning. I love when we can bring songs back uh, from church history and continue to understand the relevancy of those words for us today. What a great privilege it is to be able to sing as many have before us. I will cling to the old rugged cross. Um, Those are timely words, I think, for us, aren't they? At times when it seems like everything else fades and gives way. Jesus never does. That's what I want to cling to this morning. That's what I pray we will cling to as we spend these next few moments and recapping where we've been this week as well as digging into his word this morning that grants us the opportunity to to hear from his presence and voice today. This past week, after each Bible point, we shouted, trust Jesus. Can we try that again? Trust Jesus. Jesus. Uh, So, for example, they would learn uh, Jesus' power helps us do hard things. Oh, you guys are good today. Kids, you're going to have to help your parents and some of our adults out today. But I can tell you, I really needed to hear those words this week every single night. And just when I thought we were going to get a break coming into Sunday, I needed to hear him again Sunday morning. I told you earlier, we had storms predicted every single evening uh, this week, and we set up and we tore down, and Caleb and everybody else dealt with uh, my inability at times to make a decision of do we cover it up or do we just leave it out and take a chance. Wisdom said, don't ruin the new sound system you just bought for these these reasons. And, And then the other side was trust Jesus. And over and over, the Lord just helped us through these things. Thank you to all those every night that dealt with your pastor in a really weird way, all right? Thank you for sticking with me, hanging with us through all of those invariables. But uh, this morning when I woke up, I was reminded, trust Jesus. And so that's what we did, and we began setting things up. Isn't it a beautiful day today? If it was raining, as our, our friend Bill Zimmerman, I believe, would say, it's still a beautiful day. So we are glad to be here today, and we are going to learn together how to trust Jesus. You know, in the midst of this, I learned, though, also, and one of the points that wasn't in our daily points was that Jesus has power over all things, including creation. I was reminded today that when Jesus was in the boat and the winds and waves came, do you remember what he did? He just simply spoke and said, be still. And guess what happened? The wind and the waves stopped. Isn't it great to know that our Jesus doesn't just have the strength and power over the things that we deal with in this world, but also over all creation? I need to be reminded of that over and over and over and again today as well. So let's just briefly go back here for a, a few days. The first day, and we did this already, and that is that Jesus' power helps us do hard things So Paul says to the church in Philippi in Philippians 4.13, it says, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. I've always loved this verse because I'm a skinny guy. Like, like I wear jackets occasionally because it makes me feel like I have shoulders, all right? And, and that doesn't even do that well. So, uh, but I've loved this verse because there's been moments where I've thought, man, yeah, if Jesus is with me, then, then man, there's nothing I can't do. And, and then there's been moments physically where I've been trying to lift something and realized I couldn't do it. And then somebody like Joe Peace comes along and he's like, here, I got that. He just kind of picks it up, or, or uh, Randy here this morning. Man, I, I just can't believe the strength of some of the folks in this church, and I did not get it. But I'm reminded of this because oftentimes I learn to trust Jesus in the hard things when I'm weak. Do you ever get there? In fact, if we're strong, why would we need Jesus? In fact, Jesus tells us over and over again that it's when we're weak that he is then made strong. So 
So what I've learned is that uh, in the difficult things, it's when I realize that I'm completely powerless to do anything about it, where I understand that Jesus' power helps us to do the hard things. Oh, man, I know it's hot, and it's 1108. You all got to help me here for a few moments, all right? So Jesus' power helps us do hard things. All right. So currently, maybe like some of you, I, I feel that way about our culture. Like I'm powerless to, to feel like I can help or even do tangible things. And when we've had or I've had friends sick and, and there's nothing I can tangibly seem to do to cure them or help them through, I've had to trust in the power of Jesus that helps us do hard things. For it's in our weakness we trust Jesus to be strong. One more time. You ready? I gave you a heads up here, okay? Jesus' power helps us do hard things. Secondly, on day two, we found that Jesus' power gives us hope. Uh oh. I'm losing sermon notes here. This is not good for you all because I can talk all day, all right? Most of you know that. Uh, I've got an iPad here as long as we're good here. We'll, we'll see if she'll work. Yes, let's, let's just give this a whirl. So day two, we found Jesus' power gives us hope. Oh, you were good. You got there. You got there. Uh, we learned from the Psalms, chapter 31, or Psalm, one, or Psalm 31, verse 24, where it says, Be strong and courageous, all you who put your hope in the Lord. Hope is a very powerful motivator, isn't it? It has been the thing that has kept some people alive. It has been something that has helped people go on in the midst of very hard or difficult circumstances. I read a story about a man that approached a Little League baseball game one afternoon, and he, he asked a boy in the dugout what the score was. And the boy responded, 18 to nothing, we're behind. Well, boy, said the spectator, I bet you're a little bit discouraged. And the boy said, why should I be discouraged? We haven't even gotten up to bat yet. Hope can be a powerful motivator, can it? Something that compels us to get through difficult seasons in life. And what we find is that in Jesus, there is always, always, always hope. It's never depleted. It never runs dry. It never grows weary. In Jesus, in Jesus alone, there is always hope. So we can always say that because Jesus then lives with us. And so when we go through seasons that might make us feel hopeless, you ever feel that way right now? For some of you kids, like, man, playing with your friends or going out and doing some of the things you used to joy about not having to worry about catching some virus or spreading a virus, sometimes it can feel really hopeless. But what the Bible tells us is that in hopeless circumstances, Jesus is present and he is always hope. And so regardless of what we go through, we can trust that Jesus' power gives us hope. Ooh, let's try that one more time. Jesus' power gives us hope. All right. And then the third day, we came and found that Jesus' power helps us be bold. Our Bible verse that night was found from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 40, verse 29. And it says that he gives power to the weak and strength to the powerless. There was a Bible story from the book of Acts about a couple men who boldly went out and taught about Jesus and healed people in his name. These men were not considered educated men by some of the people in that time, such as the Sadducees, Pharisees, and teachers of the law, but they spoke boldly, and so much so that one day the Bible tells us that about 5,000 men alone believed that day in Jesus Christ for their salvation. But the story didn't stop there, for they had to be bold against those that wanted to then accuse them of doing wrong things. And so a teacher of the law asked, who gives you the power to do this? Here's how they responded. Peter said to them in verse 8, he says, We are filled with the Spirit and the rulers and elders of people. If we are being called to account today for an act of kindness shown to a man who was lame and are being asked how he was healed, then know this, 
you and all the people of Israel, for it is by the name of who? By the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead, that this man stands before you healed. Jesus is the stone you builders rejected, which was the chief cornerstone. But salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must or might be saved other than Jesus. Their strength, their boldness came from Jesus, not just because they felt like, this is my time, let's go. We're going to psych ourselves up and up here and we're going to do this. You see, they knew that the people that accused them had the power to kill them. And yet, were they afraid in this moment? They weren't afraid, were they? Through the power of the Holy Spirit, they spoke boldly against their accusers of Jesus. We can find in that story that Jesus' power then helps us be bold. Jesus' power helps us be bold. Yes. And then the fourth day, we learn that Jesus' power lets us live forever. Romans 8.11 says, The Spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. Man, I don't know about you, but over the last few years, that verse just rocks me, right? I mean, the same power that raised Jesus from the grave that we celebrate, not just at Easter, but hopefully every single day, that same power lives within you and I through Jesus Christ. I love VBS, and I remember back when I was a kid, I I remember a couple teachers, their name were Kent Beverly and Bob Sargent. Now, Kent and Bob loved us as children, and they were actively engaging us in the Word of God, but they didn't just teach me about Jesus, but they taught me that Jesus wanted to live in me. It wasn't just a bunch of great stories. It wasn't just a bunch of great knowledge. It was the desire and the passion to say, this, these young men and women need to know that Jesus died for them and desires to live in their heart and forgive them of all of their sins so they might be called a child of God and live with him forever. I am so grateful for those men and women that spoke those words of truth into my life. At the age of seven years old, I remember giving my life to the Lord. It is the greatest decision I have ever made. Might I say to you this morning, you are never too young nor too old to come to a saving relationship in Jesus, to ask him to forgive you of your sins and live in your hearts forever, that we might then live with him forever because Jesus' power lets us live forever. The last day we came together, And we found that Jesus' power helps us be good friends. You know, I can tell you this morning, I have not always been a good friend. Anybody else in that boat? Like it happens, and I've been that to some of you. Maybe some of you have been that to other people, but but here's what I'm so thankful for in the gospel, and that is that Jesus is always a good friend. In fact, in the Gospel of John, chapter 15, verse 15, did you know that he actually calls his disciples his friends? Isn't that good news for us today? That Jesus not only loves us so much he gave his life for us, but that he considers us to be his friend. And I gotta tell you, my relation with the Lord, sometimes I'm a really bad friend. Sometimes I let my personal feelings and agendas get in the way. And yet I am so thankful for a friend like Jesus that is quick to forgive and quick to welcome me back. I've known no other friends like him in my life. So giving, so caring, so compassionate, so trustworthy, so powerful, so present. And if that power lives within us, then guess what he can help us do? It's good reasoning, right? 
that if Jesus is that good a friend and that same power lives in us, then guess what he can help us do? Be good friends. Or the word of God, as we've been looking, allows us to be good neighbors, to love others like Jesus loves us. And so today, I pray that we're encouraged, not just by a week of vacation Bible school, but by the presence of God through the power of the Holy Spirit, through his son, Jesus Christ, that lives within us, that is far beyond any circumstance, anything this world will ever throw at us, any divisiveness, any disease, any famine, any war, anything. You see, the sting of sin, the Bible tells us, is death, right? The worst thing this world can throw at us is death. And the word of God tells us this. Where, O oh, death, is your victory? Where, O oh, death, is your sting? For the sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. Listen here, verse 57 of 1 Corinthians chapter 15. But thanks be to God, for he gives us victory through who? Jesus. Today, there are people that are enduring much, and I am so grateful for the power of Jesus that is present with them, aren't you? And if that presence is with us today, then I believe he's doing great things from our youngest children to our oldest adult, to those that might be driving by, to those that might be able to hear us next door, that Jesus alone gives us power to overcome all things. Isn't that good news today? That's what we've been learning about all week. That's what we pray you will continue to take with you in your homes. Families, will you continue to teach your children about Jesus? We believe wholeheartedly here that discipleship begins in the home. And if you're wondering what that looks like, would you please come talk to us, call us, email us, Facebook message us, especially my wife. She will help direct you. If you're struggling with how do I begin this? How do I start this journey? We wanna help you. We wanna partner with you so that when you come to events like VBS, man, we're just like, like pouring gasoline on what you guys are already doing in the home. So please, please begin teaching, reading, praying with your children. The sweetest thing I get to do every night before I go to bed is hold my little girl and walk her back to her room and I say, Nora, we're gonna pray. And she's learning already to close her eyes and she likes to slap her hands together. She slaps her hands together and, and we pray. And one of it is, I ask her, I say, and if you should be afraid tonight, who can you call on? And everything right now is ba, right? So, so can you pray to God? Ba. And then we ask her to pray for, for her little brother, Jacob. And I'll say, can you ask God to bless Jacob? And she'll go, ba, ba, ba. It's our prayer that our daughter knows what a relationship with the Lord is in the home. And then when she's around all you all crazy people, <laughs> you guys just reinforce what it really means to love Jesus and love others. I pray you'll grant one another grace in that. I pray you will myself and my family as well. But most importantly, I pray you know Jesus will never let you down. If we could, I'm gonna ask us to pray and I believe is our worship team coming to lead us in a song here in a few moments called Lions. And I'm going to ask us to stand together this morning if you're able. And as we stand, one of the things I've learned is that often we do things for children, and I learn just as much as an adult. I learned a lot this week. I've learned a lot this morning, and I am grateful. It's good to be together, isn't it? Praise God. Well, let's go to him in prayer, and let's just ask him to help us. Can we do that today? Do you believe in Jesus' power? So maybe there's areas in your life where you feel weak. Let me say maybe there's areas in your life where you feel like you got this. I've been there. Like, I got this. I'm real good. I believe that can be one of the greatest dangers to the strength of Jesus because we learn to rely on ourselves instead of him. Wherever you may be this morning, maybe you're a parent and you're struggling. Maybe you're just trying to figure out how do I parent a kid, a, a two-year-old, a 10-year-old, a 15-year-old. 
Maybe you're a child trying to learn how to love your brothers and sisters better or your parents or your neighbors and your friends. Maybe you need the power of Jesus to help us love those that differ from the way we think at times. And not just in our opinions regarding where we're at today, but let's even talk about Christianity and churches down the road. Maybe places we've been wounded or hurt where we need the power of Jesus to forgive and work. Today, would you just talk to him? For a few moments as Caleb plays, would you just speak and, and let him see your heart? Because guess what? He sees it anyways. Be honest. And then ask him. And I believe that when we ask and invite him in, he works in ways we can't. Can we do that together this morning? And I believe we're going to see victories all over this ground this morning, not because of us or anything we've done, but because of the power of Jesus Christ. And we can trust that this morning. Let's bow our heads. Let's close, close our eyes. Would you take just a few moments today, any area in our life today, Lord, that maybe we feel powerless against? Lord, any area today where maybe we've experienced difficulty, hopelessness, weakness, uncertainty, or division. Lord, today might we trust that your power helps us and that we ought to not just make a statement that says we trust Jesus, but Lord, this morning perhaps we simply say with all that we are, I trust you, Jesus. I trust you. I trust you this morning. I'm gonna trust you when I wake up tomorrow. I'm gonna trust you when I go to work. I'm gonna trust you when I start my schoolwork. I'm gonna trust you when I go to the store and I don't know what's gonna happen. I'm gonna trust you for the things I can't see. I'm gonna trust you for my family and that, that Lord, one day all of our children are gonna be believers in Jesus Christ. I'm gonna trust you for that today, Jesus. Pray to him today. Lord, today, I thank you, Lord, that you are with us. Lord, I thank you that you are present in the midst of our weakness. Lord, I thank you today because of your power, Lord. We don't have to go with cowardness or timidity or fear. But Lord, we go forth with the courage of lions, with a courage that knows when you speak to and through us, there is power in your name. Speak to our hearts today change our hearts today. Lord, would you bless those that are next door that may feel weak and powerless to change anything. God, I pray today they might experience the love of Jesus in a real way. Lord, for those that are listening online this morning, God, as they listen to this service, might your Holy Spirit speak to them and know that you are near. Might you relinquish fear. Might you present yourself to be powerful in the midst of instances we feel powerless. Lord, might you let us know that you are not our adversary, but Lord, that you are our friend and that you loved us so much that you gave your very life for us. And Lord, that we might know that today is just a glimpse of all of human history, that you offer life forever through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And so God, today we continue to fight. We continue to endure. We continue to trust. We continue to believe, Lord, that you and you alone are strength in the midst of what we face. Lord, today we believe that you and you alone, just like you have been called the Lion of Judah, Lord, today that you are still reigning, that you are still roaring, that your power still punishes 
ambushes and squashes the enemy at your very name. And so today, Lord Jesus Christ, we sing, we celebrate the power and the victory of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Today, we are able to say with all of our heart, Jesus' power helps us, and we say, trust Jesus. Can we do that together, church? Jesus' power helps us. Trust Jesus. One more time. For Jesus' power helps us. Trust Jesus. One more time. We're not done yet. Jesus' power helps us. Trust Jesus. And so I'm going to invite us to continue standing and let's sing together a song called Lions as our kids learn today. Let's lift our voices today. this morning. You want to know who won? Yeah. All right. Well, one more thank you. Could give a thank you to Miss Diane and Miss Sandy for counting the money this week. So thank you, ladies. You do a great job every year. So, so the year's 2020, right? And so in 1980, when I was a young person, um, there was a, we, the, the United States hosted the Winter Olympics and they were, had a pretty good hockey team, but Russia had a really, really good hockey team. And it's one of the Barr family's favorite movies. It's called Miracle. And in that, in that movie, uh, Al Michaels, who actually still does games today, was commentating the, the hockey game. And when it looked like the United States was gonna win, he goes, do you believe in miracles? And my question to you is, do you believe in miracles? Okay, so we started the day, and how much money did we have raised? 
$2,000, and the goal was 15, and so that is, how much, Zach, you're an accountant? 13,000 is what we need to raise a day. Now, can I be completely honest with you? Um, I didn't think we were going to get there, okay? I was thinking, if we, <laughs> there you go, trust Jesus, thank you. I was actually sitting in my seat going, well, 10000 would have been really good, and the board has some money that we could probably kick in, but you guys rocked it today. First, let me take the first drama out. The girls have crushed the boys, okay? <laughs> the, gr the girls today brought in over $6,000 just today. <laughs> what? Yeah, exactly. So the boys, you didn't do bad. You only bought them $1,500. Um, so, but... That gets us really, really, really close. So the total for the week is $13,481.47. So Pastor Dave, can I call an impromptu board meeting? So I think we have some board members here. So Brad Blue, you got your notes ready. Uh, I make a motion that the board kicks in $1,518.53 to reach the goal. Do I have a second? Where's Scott? Scotty got the second. <laughs> Little broad joke right there. All in favor, say aye. aye, aye. Any opposed? We kick you out of the church. <laughs> no, only kidding. only kidding. So that gets us to our goal of fifteen thousand yeah. dollars. Praise Jesus. So I don't know what to say. We instead of calling this VBS closing Sunday, I think we need to call it the Miracle VBS Sunday. So once again, thank you all. Um, I, once again, I told you I wouldn't have believed it this morning, but thank you for your offerings. We actually brought in over, I think, over $3,000 online. So thank you, those uh, watching and streaming in. Um, that's fantastic. And are we good? Um, okay. One more thing, Pastor Dave. I'll turn it back to Pastor Dave. <laughs> Oh, yeah. We, I have to get a pie in the face. We don't have to do that, do we? We don't need that. I would have been perfectly fine with that. Well, why Brittany's getting stuff ready for Caleb and I, and is Kristen helping with this, I'm assuming? So, Kristen, come on up. So, um, we, we just want to say again how, man, yeah, it's, story of Gideon just keeps coming to mind. It's come in less and less, and then the Lord does something crazy. And oftentimes people have said, how do you guys do that? Will you join me in responding by saying, we don't? God is just good. Will you help us with that this week? Will you celebrate what the Lord has done? Please do not say, wow, look what Canaz did, or look what the church did, or look how much money they raised. Please don't say that. Would you go to work tomorrow or celebrate with your friends and family and just simply say, look what God did. Look what our God has done. I can't wait to share this with the Ask You family. They, I think, thought we were raising $10,000 because that was what I told them initially. I think they were hope, hopeful we'd raise 1200 to get them some Spanish classes. What a joy it's going to be to be able to say to them, look what God has done. In fact, can, uh, can we do something a little different here? Where's my phone? Um, can, can I have you guys help me? Would you be willing to do that? Everybody stand up here for a minute. Sorry, my, uh, I've been crying, and now my nose is. Uh... All right, so on three, can we just give a resounding look what God has done? Can we do that? Can we give a trial practice here? Look what God has done, right? So on three, like one, two, three, look what God has done. Okay, let's do let's try that again. One, two, three. All right, you ready? All right, here we go. In one, two, three. Look what God has done. All right, I'm gonna send that video over to the Askews, and then uh, now I guess Caleb and I get to take a pie in the face. Ethan, where are you at? Can we get some music here as this is going on? Ethan Zimmerman, you around? Here he comes.
thank Ethan. He's been our summer intern, and this is what we've made him do is run everywhere. So much to the point Monday, I, he earned the name Heat Stroke almost, all right? Um, Ethan, thank you. It's just been such a wonderful joy to have him here. He's been called into the ministry as a student at ONU, and we have just enjoyed having him around this summer. Thank you again. Can you give us some uh, music here, and then uh, if you guys would uh, enjoy it. Yes, okay, kids, parents that are comfortable with this. If you're not, we understand. If you want to come with your kid, we've got some boxes up here for uh, physical distancing. Kids, if you guys would like to come and just kind of sit up here in front, or family members, you'd like to bring them just to make sure so you can all see here. Uh, you are welcome to do that. Just kind of, you know, everybody be mindful. We're in this together, right? So if you'd like uh, to get a little better view here of Caleb taking it, I might dodge. Uh, go ahead. Feel free. Just just stay apart here. We're going to be good this morning. Come on, put them together. I, uh, I'm trying not to get whipped cream on everything. There you go. That's better. <laughs> Thanks, my cool, yeah. cool whip brother. Yeah. yeah, hey, girls. You are amazing. And our God is so good to everybody. Thank you for coming out this week. Thank you for coming out this morning. Unfortunately, we don't get to have a picnic this year, but if you feel like sticking around and saying hi to some families, we welcome you doing that. Have a blessed week. Go in the power and the trust of Jesus Christ. We love you guys. <laughs> It's raining tacos from out of the sky. Tacos, no need to ask why. Just open your mouth and close your eyes. It's raining tacos. It's raining tacos. Out in the street, tacos. All you can eat, lettuce and shells, cheese and meat. It's raining tacos. Yum, 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 yum. 
cheese, cheese, cheese. It's raining tacos. Raining tacos. Raining tacos. 